Today's video was filmed earlier in the week and posted on our main channel at Denver Broncos Breakdown by Chat Sports. So if you're a Broncos fan and you want a more in-depth Broncos YouTube channel, I invite you to go subscribe there. Use the link down below. But for now, enjoy some trade ideas for Sean Payton. Coming up on today's show, we're going to recap the latest draft rumors surrounding the Denver Broncos as ESPN put out a pretty good article with what they're hearing heading into the 2024 NFL Draft. But I first want everyone watching to weigh in for me in the comment section below. What position should the Broncos pick first? Our lead draft expert here at Chat Sports, Tom Downey, slacked me this morning saying, what do you think Denver's going to do at 12? I said, honestly... No idea. I mean, they can go so many different directions, whether it's trading up, trading back, staying put. And if they do stay put, they could go anywhere from Brock Bowers to maybe an offensive lineman. So with that being said, let's get into today's show here. As Matt Miller wrote down what he's hearing going into the draft, and it included a nice little tidbit on your Broncos saying, speaking of offensive tackles, another team to keep an eye on is the Denver Broncos. Left tackle Garrett Bowles is entering the final year of his deal, one that was signed by the previous regime and will turn 32 right after the 2024 draft. The Broncos are light on draft picks without a second round this year, but should be considered a team to watch at tackle in round one or round three. This does not shock me as Denver being labeled as a team that might go after an offensive tackle. Now, what will shock me is if they draft an offensive tackle and keep Garrett Bowles, especially if they take an offensive tackle in round one. Round number three, not so much. You can kind of have him sit for a year and then maybe take over from Bowles. But to have your 12th overall pick be used on a position that won't even see the field, barring an injury, that seems like a little bit of a waste. Um, when you look at Denver's offensive line, you've got a really solid group altogether, I think. Bowles, Powers, Forsyth, slash Wadenberg, slash Mustafer, they're all battling for the starting center role, and then Miners and McGlinchey. Now, the first round of the draft, and really the first two days of the draft, they're going to be filled with really good prospects on the offensive line, and specifically at offensive tackle. When we talk about who I expect to go round one in this year's draft, we're looking at Joe Alt from Notre Dame, who I think is going to be like a Hall of Fame tackle. I, I don't want to get ahead of myself, but I just think he's that special and that surefire of a prospect. Um, Olu Fashanu out of Penn State. He's another guy to keep an eye on as well. Um, played a lot on the right side of the offensive line, 78.8 overall PFF grade last year. No, no sacks allowed, 10 hurries, and four penalties to go along with it. He's six foot six, 312 pounds, two-year starter at left tackle, I beg your pardon, making 21 career starts on the left side of the offensive line. I kind of glossed over Joe Alt, mostly because I expect him to go top 10. So unless Denver's trading up for him, which I don't think they would trade up for an offensive tackle, he's likely going to be long gone by the Broncos at pick number 12, but Olu Fashanu may very well be there at pick number 12. Another guy to watch for is the Alabama offensive lineman, J.C. Latham, 81.9 overall PFF grade. Remember, when it comes to PFF grades, I like to add 10, and that's the school letter grade. So we're looking at a 92 player. That's an A- minus grade. This is a really solid prospect. He's six foot six, 342 pounds, now, he is built to play like a guard, but he could also play right tackle with a understanding of he may not be the best pass protector, but he's a human bulldozer. That's kind of the nickname he has picked up in the pre-draft process as someone who's just going to maul and run people over. So I'm not quite sure if that's the best fit for the Broncos because if they're drafting a tackle, it's to play left tackle, right? It's to replace Garrett Bowles. It's not someone they may see to kick inside one day. They've got Ben Powers. He's probably not going to be here for the next 10 years. Quinn Miners, I sure hope, is, though. But J.C. Latham, just from an like, athletic standpoint, he's one of the freakiest athletes at that position. Moving on here to the Oregon State tackle, Talise Fuaga. 88.2 overall PFF grade. No sacks allowed for the Beavers last year. And only two hits given up. He is six foot six as well. 
You might be noticing pattern here. They're all massive human beings, okay? 324 pounds. Now, he's got a lot of experience at right tackle. 25 starts there. But some people project, like Latham, he may be a guard in the NFL. So once again, I'm not so sold on that being a great fit for the Broncos because they should not be looking for guys that are in-betweeners, right? They should be looking for clear and definitive tackles, whether that's Olu Fashanu or Joe Alt if he somehow falls to Denver at pick number 12. This next guy, I think, is definitively a tackle. Uh, it is the Washington Huskies offensive tackle, Troy Fatanu, 75.1 overall PFF grade, two sacks allowed, and six penalties given up. He's six foot four, 317 pounds. Now, he had 29 starts in Seattle at left tackle and two at left guard for the Huskies. He was also a part of a team award, which was the Joe Moore Award, which goes to the nation's top offensive line, and he was the best player on that offensive line, and he's got a lot of experience at playing left tackle. Now, keep in mind, he played left tackle for Michael Penix, who was a lefty, so kind of flip-flop that in your brain, where for a righty, that's your right tackle, right? That's not the blind side tackle. That's not the guy that's going to get the big paycheck in free agency. If the Broncos are truly exploring going tackle in round one. I would try to trade back. No guarantee that you will be able to. You always need someone to trade with. But if they want to go with a Talith Fuanga, a Troy Fontenu, like one of those caliber players, I think it's in their best interest to try and trade back from 12, somewhere towards 16 to 20, picking up, pick up an extra day two pick. You're probably not going to get a second rounder for going from 12 to 16, but maybe if you go from 12 to 18 or 19, you could gain a second rounder, and then you could use that second round pick on a Michael Penix or a Bo Nix, where if that doesn't work out, you're not out a first round pick, where you still got a really good offensive tackle. Now, I've got more thoughts to share on this subject, but really quickly, I want to let you guys in on our awesome sponsor today, which is Prize Picks, Daily Fantasy Made Easy. When I say easy, I mean easy. All you do is pick two to six players and then choose more or less on their projected stat. Now, if that's not clear enough for you, let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. For the national championship game, I'm taking the less on Zach Eady. He took down my Tennessee Volunteers, so this is more of a spite selection than anything else. But it's 38 points, rebounds, and assists combined. Also, if I'm taking the less on Zach Eady, I'll take the more on a UConn Husky. And then I like the more on Luka Doncic tonight. 52.5 points, rebounds, assists combined. The Mavs are hot. I'll take the best player on the team by a mile on the more. So if you like my selections and you want to have some fun while watching college basketball tomorrow, the NBA, the NHL, whatever it may be, download prize picks today and use code CLNS for a first-time deposit match up to $100. Because I love you all, I put that link in the comments and description of today's video. Prize picks. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. So after running through some of the round one offensive tackle targets, let's say Denver decides to wait till round three, like Matt Miller pointed out as a possibility, and they target it with their 76 overall pick. Here are some names that could be in play at that position. So you got Roger Rosengraden, Christian Jones, Dominic Puny, Blake Fisher, and then a very, um, let's call unique prospect out of Yale. It is Karone Amaganji. Amaganji. Yeah, I'm going to have to say that three or four times to get it correct. But let's get to know um, the Yale Bulldog because several insiders believe he is this year's deep sleeper, okay? Started at left tackle the last two seasons after starting at guard. I'm going to say his name correctly once and for all. Karan Amagaji. Okay, I think I got it down. Now, unfortunately for Amagaji, he suffered a torn quad four games into the 2023 season for the Yale Bulldogs, so his season was cut short, but NFL prospects are still very high on him, and they think he is someone worth taking a look at. Of course, starting at left tackle will keep Denver's interest because if they are going offensive tackle, that would be the one vacancy, whether it's this year or next year. If they draft an offensive tackle in round one, 
it's not like they need that guy to play in 2024 because they're in a win-now window. But to me, it just doesn't make a ton of sense to have him sit on the bench. That's not usually a position you have to sit to learn. That's a position where you have to be on the field to kind of get reps and know what the NFL game speed is like. Whereas if you pick a tackle in round three, I think you could afford to have him sit on the bench for a season if the plan is to move on from Garrett Bowles after 2024 because maybe he needs some time in practice to truly get a better grasp of the NFL game speed in terms of uh, instead of having him birth by fire in the middle of the game, getting ran over by NFL defensive ends when he's not nearly at that level. Whereas round one targets, they can probably hold their own against some NFL defensive ends. Now, next up on the show, we're going to talk about what does this mean for Garrett Bowles, right? If you are going to draft an offensive tackle, don't you think there's a good chance they may move on from their current offensive tackle? And it's not Mike McGlinchey. They just gave him a five-year, near $90 million contract last offseason. It's the guy that Matt Miller pointed out. Now, ironically enough, a few days ago on the channel, actually, I think it was two days ago, yeah, I put a video out about five trades the Broncos could make in the NFL draft. And I invite you to go watch that video if you haven't already. But trade number five was Garrett Bowles to the Green Bay Packers for a day two pick swap where Denver goes from 76 all the way up to 58 and Green Bay replaces David Bakhtiari on their left side of the offensive line. Now, I think Bowles is someone that I used to be somewhat critical of, of I don't think he's a cornerstone left tackle. I'm not so sure that he's really worth the contract they gave and man, did he tell me to eat my words last season. After coming off a broken leg, he had one of his best seasons of his NFL career, ranking 22nd out of 81 qualifying tackles, five penalties, and two sacks allowed. In fact, you take a step back here and you look at his entire career. I mean, he had a bit of a slow start, especially with the penalties. Then he had that breakout 2020 campaign, a top three tackle in PFF size, and then last year, or uh, yeah, 2022, I should say, has his season cut short. And then this past season now uh, puts together a really strong campaign going into the final year of his contract. So revisiting that trade idea I cooked up, would you do this trade, right? Where you go offensive tackle, say, Olu Fashanu, for example, out of Penn State at pick number 12, and then you trade Garrett Bowles, and you get your second-round pick back or get a second-round pick back. And at pick 58, maybe Bo Nix or Michael Penix is waiting for you at that spot. So you get the number one tackle you wanted at pick 12. You don't risk losing that guy because you didn't trade back 10 spots or so. And you still walk away with a second and a third-round pick in the upcoming draft, but no Garrett Bowles. I would only trade Garrett Bowles for a day-two pick. Is that his value? Probably not. I think when you look at trades, you really, as fans, we tend to underestimate the, uh, the significance of the remaining years of a contract, the financial ability to maneuver around that, and then two, the player's age. And Garrett Bowles is an aging, expensive left tackle who plays really well, but whatever draft pick a team was going to give up for him, they would probably just use that pick on an offensive tackle and get one at 120th of the price that Garrett Bowles is going to cost you for 2024. However, if Green Bay doesn't want to roll the dice on picking a tackle in day two of the draft, and they want to go get a more surefire thing, and they're willing to take on a big contract as a result, then it could be a win-win for both sides. Otherwise, I'm not dying or rushing to trade Garrett Bowles. I think he's a good starting left tackle. And with this team having a bit of a turbulent uh, quarterback room at the moment, it's probably not a bad idea to have at least some stability on the offensive line and not have it be a bit of a circus up front there as well. That will do it for us on this edition of the Broncos Breakdown. I really appreciate everyone who tuned into today's show. If you have not subscribed yet, I invite you to go ahead and do so, and we will catch up later.